All right, so next let's move on to example 3.2. So example 3.2 tells us to modify car loop so that each time through the loop it plots the value of a versus the value of i, your loop variable. Once you get that working, modify it so it plots the value of a with red circles, the value of b with blue diamonds, um, and then it gives us a little more suggestions. So if you think back to example 3.1, uh, and so what we did there is we created a for loop so that we could take car update, which uh, tracks the passage of cars between Albany and Boston uh, after the passage of one week. Uh, we updated it, or we created a for loop so that we could run it repeatedly 52 times to um, model the passage of cars between the two cities over the course of one year. And what we found is when we looped, we could display the current values after each week uh, within the command window, uh, but it pretty quickly became um, intractable and, and hard to follow uh, in terms of you know, readily displaying what was going on. And so here, um, we are going to clear up the output or try and clear up the output by making a plot. So we'll take car loop and we'll update it uh, so that we use the plot command to plot uh, the population of A and B as a function of time, and then that'll also allow us to quickly see if we reach some sort of equilibrium state. Okay, so I'll pause this and then I will go to MATLAB uh, and we'll play around with uh, car loop. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have MATLAB open uh, and I've just resized my window a little bit so that I can plot or uh, pop up a plot window uh, and not cover my uh, workspace um, so that you can see um, what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, car update and car loop, uh, which we worked on in example um, 3 1. And I'm just going to check car update. So we, we don't want to touch car update. Uh, and I just want, but what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I have um, the output of A and B each iteration suppressed so that we're not getting a ton of output. Okay, and it is. I have a semicolon in line 13 and 16. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, and I'm just going to keep um, car loop open. Okay, and so in terms of workspace variables, uh, those aren't too important. So I'm going to resize my window a little bit. Okay, so here was the script we had created for our example uh, 3 1. So I start with 150 cars in Albany and Boston, uh, and then I'm going to um, model the passage of one year. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to resave this and I'm going to call it car loop 2. Okay. Uh, the simple reason being is I have a copy of car loop 1 uh, uploaded um, already to Google Drive that you can access on our YouTube channel. So I want to make sure I don't overwrite that file um, so that um, you know I'm not accidentally modifying a file you're trying to use uh, in, in the previous example. So I'm just going to call it car loop 2 um, so that um, uh, I don't overwrite the previous file from the last example. Okay, so I'm not going to display the value of A and B at the end. Uh, and okay, so here we are. So to get started, initialize uh, value of A and B uh, 150. I loop for um, I is 1 to 52 in each iteration call car update. So what car update will do is after calling car update, the value currently st uh, stored afterwards to A and B. Uh, will be the value after the passage of one week. Okay, so if I wanted to um, plot those, okay, what I would have to do is we'll have to start with the hold on command. Okay, and then after uh, the car update command, I can plot. Okay, so now I need to think about my dependent independent variable. So my um, uh, independent or x variable will be um, i, the week, uh, followed by um, in this case, I say A, the number of cars in, in Albany. Uh, and I can't remember exactly what symbol, um, but I think it was maybe uh, red circles. Okay, so I'll plot the um, current car, uh, car count in Albany versus the current week uh, as a red circle. And then we'll do the same thing for Boston. And um, I think it mentioned uh, maybe a, a blue diamond. Um, so we can do a, a blue. A diamond. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I think that's diamond. Okay, and so now if I were to run this car loop 2, let's see what happens and let's see if we need to do any troubleshooting. Okay, um, 
So I didn't plot diamonds, I plotted triangles up for Boston, uh, but that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now I have a plot. Uh, so this is weak, here's cars, uh, here's Boston, uh, here's Albany. Okay, let's see if we can improve this uh, and maybe make it a, a little bit better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is if I hold on there, but come to think of it, let's move hold on. Actually, let's put it above. Okay, so that we can plot the cars in Albany and Boston um, that we have initially. So so let's plot um, cars, um, plot initial population of cars. Okay, so let's plot, um, so week number B, C, zero, A, and I plotted those as red circles. Um, plot, uh, and again, I apologize if my symbol types are different uh, than what's listed in the problem statement. Um, I guess my memory is getting a, a little rusty, I suppose. So I'm going to close this, try again, run car loop, there we go. And so now I have a point at zero. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, one thing in the interest of making mistakes is um, if I want to, if I tweak my script and I wanted to rerun things, um, it's important to close this. So what would happen if I run car loop again, it's just going to plot another set of data directly on top of that. Um, how I can make it a little more visible is maybe if I were to plot both the stars and rerun it, it's just going to plot completely over the other data set. Right? And so that's not what we want. Um, you're just going to create a file that's getting uh, larger and larger. Okay, so let me close this. Okay, and now if I rerun. Right. So now there's the, the latest version. Okay. Now we're told, um, let's make this guy look pretty. Okay. Um, we can absolutely do that. So the first thing I will think to do is, well, one question would be, do you want to tweak uh, the x-axis and y-axis limit? Um, I don't know if they look pretty good um, to me, um, but the interest of tweaking things, if I wanted to change the x-limit, or the x-axis range, so it just goes from 0 to 52. Um, I could do that. Function is xlim, uh, parentheses, because it's a function call. Then argument would be in brackets, lower bound, comma, upper, upper bound. And if I want to change the y-lim, um, I could do, so just in the interest of doing it, y-lim, uh, let's do 100 comma 200. Okay. I should also point out while I'm putting it in the script, um, if I wanted to get an idea if that is actually going to be uh, the correct command, I can just copy and paste it down here in my command window. Right? And I could essentially um, you know, perform unit testing. Okay. And so those commands work. So I know after I call the original car loop, if I were to add those commands, uh, that's what I would get. Uh, life is great, right? So if I were to close it and run it, um, I would expect to get exactly that. Okay. Well, uh, you'll see I added a semicolon here. Um, semicolons aren't necessary. Okay. There's uh, no output to suppress. Okay. So sorry, my my rookie mistake. If I wanted to add labels, okay. So an x-axis x-axis label would be uh, x label. Uh, so in this case, my x-axis, so x-label is a function, um, and so the argument is going to be a string. So this will correspond to the uh, week number, uh, or just week maybe. Uh, my y-label will be uh, population of cars. Okay. Again, if I wanted to see if I've got these commands working right, just paste them down here. X label, Y label, bam. Um, if I want a title, I could do say title um, example 3.2, right? Or you can give it something uh, possibly a little more. 
descriptive. Hey, cool. All right, excellent. And if I just want to go, you know, go the distance, I could also save it. Okay, so let me add maybe comments. Uh, uh, tweaking axes the limits. Adding labels. Okay, that's cool. Um, and then let's say save uh, figure. So remember the two commands we have is first we have save fig. Okay, and so save fig is a function. Arguments a string. It's the name of the figure file we want to save. So if I want to call this maybe example three two dot fig. Okay, and, and so again, unit testing, copy and paste. Okay, uh, that's going to create a figure file over here that now uh, appears in my uh, folder. Uh, that's a figure that can be edited by MATLAB. If I want to print a copy um, so that I could say turn it in in a report, so if I wanted a figure of type PNG, so that's dash a dot or dash D PNG uh, as a string, uh, followed by the name. Um, of the uh, image uh, I want to create. So example 32 PNG, interest of testing it out, and we can execute it here in the command window too. And so here's my PNG that I could open outside of MATLAB. Okay. And if you want to learn more about uh, printing and saving, you know, have a look at the documentation for save fig uh, and print. Okay. Many other file formats exist. Okay, cool. So if I were to run this now, okay, car loop two, okay, I get this nice pretty figure, um, and at the same time, whoop, at the same time, I'm saving a figure um, that I can edit later on, uh, and I'm also saving a um, image that I could include in, uh, say, a laboratory report. Okay. Excellent. Okay, but uh, let's keep going. Okay. So the next thing that would be advantageous to add would be legend. Okay. Um, so I know that this is Boston and this is Albany because I made the graph. Okay. Um, but uh, if I were to turn this in as lab report, uh, first thing I might ask is uh, which ones are Boston, which ones Albany. You could always add a caption to your figure within your report, uh, but in this case, it'd be nice to add a legend. Okay, and MATLAB conveniently has uh, a legend function that we can use to accomplish exactly that. The issue is, is right now when we're only plotting data points, it's really annoying and confusing to use. <laughs> um, once we learn about vectors, it'll become substantially easier. Okay, but playing with our um, plot that's already open. Okay. The command is a legend. Okay. Okay, so it's a function. And so remember when we talked about plotting, we said every time we call plot and we plot a data point, MATLAB interprets that as plotting a new set of data. So when we have hold on, every time we plot a new set of data, it'll retain all of the other data currently in the figure. If hold off was uh, if we had used hold off, um, the default setting in MATLAB Every time we went to go plot a new set of data, it would clear all the other sets off of the figure. Okay, so with the legend command, legend is a function, so parentheses, the arguments will be strings. And so you can list, um, uh, separated by comma, uh, the sequence of strings, where the first string would correspond to the legend label for a data set one, the data set two, so on and so forth, as many as you want to list. Okay, um, and so in this case, it'll work. So if I think about what we plotted first, okay, first we plotted uh, population in Albany and then population in Boston. Okay, so testing this interactively, I could do legend Boston. Better do a capital B. Oh, Albany was first. Albany, comma, Boston. Okay, so there are two strings separated by commas. 
first argument corresponds to a label for data set 1 uh, followed by data set 2 where if I look at my function the first data set or point we plot is the initial population Albany second is initial population in Boston okay. so if I press return okay I have a nice pretty label that's now been added to my graph where things will become confusing is um, when we're just plotting individual data points like this you need to keep track of what you're plotting um, but we'll tackle some of those examples later on uh, and know that ultimately when we get to vectors things will become uh, substantially easier so just to bring this full circle then so let's add a legend okay okay and so it's my legend command here that I can just copy and paste. Uh, that's saved. So if I were to close this, run car loop 2, got my beautiful plot, which includes a uh, legend. And then if I were to come over here and open up my PNG, right? Oh no, uh, my legend's not there. What I do? Oh, the issue is I added the legend uh, after I saved the figure and printed it. So legend needs to come first. Bam. Okay. So now we save it again. Try it one more time. Okay. Nice, pretty figure. I'm gonna take a look at my PNG. Hey, now I have the legend on there nicely. Uh, cool. Okay, know that there's ways to specify the placement of the legend. Uh, so if you look at documentation, so there's documentation available for xlim, ylim, xlabel, ylabel, title, legend, safe fig, and print. All of them have their own documentation pages. Uh, and legend, you could specify where the legend goes. Uh, or one way to cheat is you could just, you know, click on it and move it around. Um, and then also know you could always just do a file uh, and save as. Uh, you can save it as a .fig, uh, but you could also uh, save it as an image format for, for saving. Okay, so you could always do things uh, interactively using the GUI uh, if you wanted. Okay, but basic setup was um, within my plot or for loop, I just added my plot command, and then after all the data was plotted, I just tweaked the axes, added some labels and legends, uh, and then saved and printed. Okay, excellent.